I am still coming off of the high of our most recent cruise on the Celebrity Beyond. That cruise would be nine nights and it would take us to Grand Cayman, Aruba, Curacao, and finally Jamaica. Um, one of the comments that I received on my initial review of the Beyond was to create some video talking about the different excursions. So I do want to take a few moments over the next few videos to talk about each of those ports. So the first port, which was November 24th, actually was in Grand Cayman. Grand Cayman is a tender port, meaning the ship had to stop out in the middle of the ocean, and then we used smaller boats or vessels to bring us to the actual island. I've heard a lot of reviews about celebrities' use of the tender platform or the magic carpet on the edge class of vessels. However, much to my disappointment, we actually walked down to the destination gangway and got off of the ship in the old fashioned way. We boarded some rather rickety old ships or vessels and then we made our way over to the island. It was really neat and cool to be able to see the vessel from this perspective. However, I really enjoyed taking video and pictures of the ship from such a low vantage or viewpoint. Once we got off the vessel, we didn't have any real plans on what to do in Grand Cayman. So in typical fashion, because we're not spending a whole lot of money on excursions, we simply walked the port and it was so humid. It was very hot and humid. And after about 10 or 15 minutes of walking, um, we finally ran into a gentleman, Josh is his name, who offered to take us on an excursion to a private beach. And he just raved about this beach. We were skeptical in the beginning and we continued to walk and eventually we were tired of walking after about, like I said, 15 or 20 minutes and we found Josh again and we ended up taking this excursion. Josh and his colleague led us across a street down an alleyway and to what I perceived to be a less than modern van and I thought to myself, what the hell have we gotten ourselves into? Josh and his colleague took us on a short tour of the island. He pointed out his childhood home um, he talked about the gym that he used to work out at, um, and then he took us to this private island, or this private beach rather. I think the entry fee or the travel there was about $20 per person, um, and then the entry fee for the gym was about 20, or not the gym rather, but the entry fee for the beach was about $20 per person, plus $5 if you wanted a beach umbrella. So we opted for the two lounge chairs and the beach umbrella, and then we had to buy our food on our own. This was a really calm and low key space, but it's not the typical beach. It's not a beach that I am accustomed to. Um, there wasn't a huge beach front. Um, as a matter of fact, there was a seawall kind of protecting the beach from the water. And if you wanted to go down, you had to take some rather rickety stairs to get down to the actual beach. Um, and from my understanding, it was a huge drop off. I didn't go out to the beach, but it was a really neat and interesting experience. Uh, we didn't get a whole lot of cultural knowledge or tour of the, of the space or of Grand Cayman um, other than what we were able to get while riding on the bus. I will share with you in this video some of the things that Josh and his colleague had to say about Grand Cayman. Um, so they talked about um, some huge investor that has come in and spent a whole lot of money to buy up space on the island and everyone's, everyone's desire to want to work for him. Um, and talked about his cousin who used to work for the U.S. Embassy and a host of other different things. But again, it wasn't a huge cultural immersion and that's our fault. We didn't necessarily pick an excursion for the immersion, but rather for the relaxation, which we were able to do on the beach. On the beach, we did meet a few other people from the vessel. Um, I met some of what would become my newest friends um, because I was using my DJI Osmo 6 mobile for my phone on that beach. I got a chance to meet um, some folks and, and we really created a bond after that moment. Not necessarily in that moment, but later on in the day. Um, because when we returned back to port, there was a long line awaiting us to get a tender back to the vessel. And so this wasn't the most glamorous part of the trip. Um, I went ahead and got in line. Daniel decided he wanted to check out the shops at the terminal. And I told him, go ahead, I'm getting in line. Well, the gentleman that I talked about a little earlier came to me as I was approaching the front of the line to say, hey, I see your man's back there. Are you gonna grab him and tell him to come up? And I tried to get him to come up, he wouldn't. And later on, dude's wife came and said, hey, are you guys mad at each other? Why is he way back there and you are way up here? So I ended up sitting at the 
actual tender uh, entry point for about 20 to 30 minutes waiting on Daniel to make his way through the line, which was frustrating because Daniel ended up getting up to the front of the line before that actual tender was able to take off. And so we were both able to board it at the same time. Overall, it was a really neat experience to be able to go to Grand Cayman and to be able to see the ship at these perspectives. I would say that was probably the most exciting part to me was to be able to see the ship from such a low vantage point. Um, of the four ports that we visited, Grand Cayman was probably my least favorite. Yep, I would go back again. Um, but I would probably be a little more intentional about choosing an activity as I think we got off the ship very ill-prepared as to what it was we were going to do.